Hello and welcome to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Louise, your host for today's episode and, uh, well, the delayed coverage is showed on FBC TV. That'll be tonight as well as tomorrow morning. Now, drowning is preventable and uh, it's also one of the leading causes of unintentional death or injury as uh, this is worldwide as well as here as stated by the World Health Organization. Now it's the start of the new year and it's only right that uh, we have join us today on Gold FM Speak Your Mind, the director of the Water Safety Council, John Philp. A warm welcome to the show. Thank you, Louise. And uh, thank you for being with us here. And we also have from the police, and uh, this is the coordinator, National Planning Operations, Vinod Lal. Thank you also for taking your time to be with us. Thank you, Louise. Well, that's very nice. But uh, anyhow, um, I'll talk to Mr. John Philp first. Uh, let's get a bit relaxed first. And uh, just uh, a question of uh, where you were born and raised before <laughs> we go on. Born in uh, Suva. Suva? Raised in Lamy. Oh, okay. Well, so was I. But uh, anyhow, when was the Water Safety Council established? It was formally established just last year, if I remember correctly, early, early last year. But it dates back to 2012 when stakeholders all came together, including the police, who Vinod represents, mm -hmm. um, to decide to actually form a, a body, a collaborative national body to, do, to discuss the issues of drowning prevention. Okay, so you are pretty newly established, but you're doing great work, I must say. Well, could you tell us what the Water Safety Council mission is? Uh, well, we're probably a third of the way there. The, the first step was to take the drowning statistics from the police and put them into a form that people could understand. Obviously, you need numbers before you can attack uh, most problems in life. Yes. And then the second step was advocacy, and I think we've been fairly successful with that um, in terms of the fact that most people in Fiji uh, are aware there's a drowning problem. It's the, f the first step. And it culminated last year with uh, the Prime Minister of Fiji um, presenting the 2014 drowning report in, in his offices. So um, that was just amazing. You know, we thank the Prime Minister for that, to have the leader of the, the current government actually recognize that it's an issue. Yes, indeed. So uh, I'd like to congratulate you too, Mr. Philp, the Water Safety Council of Fiji, for being awarded the best abstract paper during the World Conference on Drowning Prevention. This was in Penang, Malaysia, last November. How many countries, again, participated in putting together the abstract paper? There were 231 entries from 65 countries. It's the annual, it's the biannual, is that every two years? Right. The World Drowning Prevention Conference organized by the International Life Saving Association. All right, so mm. what did the presentation focus on? So the presentation was largely put together by Catherine Murray, who is a, an Australian-funded volunteer working for the Water Safety Council in Suva. Now, what was um, groundbreaking about what Catherine did was she formed a very good working relationship with not only the police, but the Bureau of Meteorology. So she was able to take the statistics, the demographics of your age and where you drowned and so forth, and place that against a background of the weather. What was it doing? Was it raining? Was it, you know, was it school holidays? Was it not? And uh, that's not been done to our knowledge anywhere in the world and so the the world body thought that was very interesting and, and uh, useful information yes absolutely now uh, what did the water safety council Fiji discover in the joint study carried out from May 2012 to April 2015 well um, just as in the rest of the world 80% of drownings are male um, but what was unique to Fiji was the fact that uh, if you want to put it in just one simple sentence. Basically, when it rains and the school holidays, mostly they sort of coincide. Yeah. People are drowning, and, and a lot of young kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's a really sad thing is about the children because uh, this is where the police come. I know that there have been uh, numerous warnings uh, from police, and uh, well, that's why we have uh, with us our friend, and that is uh, Mr. Vinod Lal. Now, uh, Mr. Vinod Lal, how many people died in 2015 as a result of of drowning? Uh, when we look at the figures, there was a total of 40 deaths, drowning deaths attributed to drowning, and 40? 40. That because I remember I read in the paper in December it wasn't as much as that, so it kind of peaked in the yes, um, last there was month 40 of the year. And compared to 2014, it was 47. So when we look at it on a positive note, there yeah. was a decrease. Yes, by seven. Yes. 
but we didn't see a decrease in the actual category of the children that actually drowned. Okay, so no decrease uh, with the children. So yes. that's uh, the obvious issue here yes. where parents yes. are, um, you know, not uh, supervising their children. Now, what would, uh, what would you like to say about uh, these deaths, this number, number of deaths of children especially? See, when we look at it, about uh, we are looking at uh, a total of 17 deaths that were of uh, under 13 years. And uh, this is an alarming figure when we look at it. I mean, that's attributed to the whole year. Yes. And uh, when we look at children under 13, some as young as 1, 2, Five years old, they were left alone in the uh, picnic spots. Mm -hmm. So that amounts to sheer negligence by the parents. Yeah. So that is an alarming issue Abs at the moment. Absolutely. So the negligence by the parents. Right. So uh, what is your advice to parents and guardians about what they should know about the safety of their children? I mean, uh, what we have we have kept on our proactive approach towards this drowning. And we have given advisories to parents that whenever they are in picnic spots or even if they, they are staying, if they are residents near inland waterways or something like that, they should be always cautious about their toddlers, about their children, where they are. But that is not the case. forthcoming. Okay, and um, also, you know, how with the hot weather, a lot of children like yes. to go swimming and sometimes uh, they just take off. Yes, and definitely. before you know it, you know the parents get um, information that uh, they've died because of drowning. drowning. Yes, uh, I mean, listen, uh, when you look at it, some of the reasons that we have come up with for these drowning cases. See, uh, a guy was looking for his flip flop, and he drowned. He was trying to retrieve his flip flop from the swift currents, and he drowned. So these things are, I mean, this sense of this rationality should be in the mind that no if i can't go there why the hell should i should uh, risk my life for a free flow i mean it's the mindset that needs to be changed mm. is it not you know? yes so this is when we need education and uh, mr philip do you know if uh, we have schools that are have it in their curriculum about the issue of water safety? Uh, good, good point. Um, Minister of Education last year announced that uh, swimming was to be compulsory in schools and uh, that's going to take some time to develop curriculums and you know access to pools or, or uh, rivers and creeks because you can teach kids to swim in creeks. You can from low resource countries that we've seen around the world like Sri Lanka they use bamboo enclosures to keep, to keep uh, kids safe as you're teaching them. But uh, we haven't had uh, any close contact with the Ministry of Education, but um, the Water Safety Council, through its international network, has access to curriculums from other resource poor countries that we can very easily turn to the Fiji situation. All right, then I'll, I'll have to cut you off there, but uh, we'll be back for more on Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits shortly. It's Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. And uh, you're on Speak Your Mind. This is live on radio, but a delayed coverage shown on FBC TV. A very important subject we're talking about, especially starting off the new year. I must ask uh, Mr. Lal that uh, we already have statistics to drowning, and uh, that was in the new year, 2016. Yes. So how many so far, Mr. There Lal? There has been three drowning cases up to date for this new year. Okay, uh, so two, how two were resultant of missing at sea, both capsized, and one was he went out to he went out to uh, to a river for swimming. Okay, so we have three in total. Three in total, and yes. um, okay, so uh, Mr. Phil, we were talking about how uh, being educated on the danger of water being very important, and uh, it also to be included in the curriculum in schools. So you can continue from where you left off. Okay. 
Um, yeah, we were just talking earlier about how it needs to infiltrate every level of society and every, every level possible in schools. For example, in, uh, in science, you can learn the physics of, of drowning and, and rainfall and rivers and, and water flows and so forth, you know, so people know mentally and they can calculate. And then you have to, to couple that with experience. And, um, and it's just purely experience with water, you know. Um, so that means on a, on a government level, city councils and so forth, I see that uh, governments budgeted for a new swimming pool in Latoka. That's fantastic, those sorts of things. Yeah. And access to beaches and, and proper facilities at beaches so people can go in a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, life savings is another one. We don't have any patrolled beaches in Fiji. So that's exactly what I wanted to bring up. very close to my heart, which I'm advocating for at the moment. Yeah. Oh, that's great, because that's what I was thinking. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Lau. Okay, uh, in, in regards to the patrol beaches, uh, for police officers, I mean, for the police, Fiji police force, we have only about 12 divers, specialist divers. Okay. And they are actually used in situations where warranted, just like in search and rescue and all those things. All right. So patrolling by police probably would be a far-fetched idea at the moment. But uh, what I was but thinking... we are looking towards that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for your comments about the school curriculum, I, I think it's high time, uh, Lucia that uh, actually we should include that because we are surrounded by water. Yeah, creeks, and rivers. Creeks, rivers. And most of these deaths that we have seen, it's, it's under the age of 13, I mean, about 42% is it's under the inexperience, age. Inexperience, eh? Yes. yes. And the sense of responsibility too comes in, that the parents should be actually inculcated into the program of guardianship, what they should be actually trying to look out for in this sort of situations, if they go out for picnics, if there is a, uh, just like during the cyclone season, these, pe uh, these people who, are, who went missing at sea, they should have taken heed of the warnings that were given. Continuous warnings were given by the Fiji Met Office, for the adverse weather situation and even through police advisories, but still we saw people going out to sea. Yeah, but it was good that uh, we had about, uh, how many of them were saved? They were yes. plucked out of the sea, but, but they had life jackets uh, on, uh, which uh, was uh, really on good. On a positive note. I mean, imagine if they didn't have any life jackets yes. on. That would have been tragic. But my question is, they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yes. Well, mm. uh, they were giving the excuse that uh, they had actually gone out before the warning. I remember reading that in the papers. But, I mean, in the lead up, there's always like, you know, a trough of low pressure. You've got the yes. mariners yes. Uh, bulletin. Four or five days warning at I least. Mean, a general mm. weather bulletin is something else and for mariners is something else. Yes. Exactly. So and they that's should be it. able to read that out. Yeah, so. that's, that's really right. But you were saying about lifeguards. I was mm. thinking the same thing too. But uh, I know like overseas, you have these lifeguards on popular picnic Absolutely. spots. Absolutely. Yes. But, um, well, of course, resources, that's a thing with us. And uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, even village men, you know, they could appoint uh, village men and probably give them, you know, some money just to, you know, just have, keep an eye out mm. for the children. Absolutely. There are ways this can happen. As Vinod said, the police have, you know, on, only limited resources. So yes. the, the community has to take responsibility. I think there's a fantastic idea of having lifeguards. Because I think it should come out from probably the water safety. Well, in fact, I've been writing to lands um, for, I think, four years now, yeah. trying to secure a piece of foreshore reserve land in Nuttendola Beach okay. to build Fiji's first uh, life-saving club. That would be really good because, uh, I mean, even life-saving skills, that is so important. I went down there on both Boxing Day and New Year's Day just to take uh, photos and, and write observations. And on, remember, Boxing Day was uh, pretty bad weather. It was blowing maybe 30 knots and it was wet. I counted uh, 80 private cars, 30 buses, and 17 uh, minivans, and uh, probably a lot of buses that come and drop people off. So there's probably about 1,500 people with an approaching cyclone and 350 people in e the water at Nutton exactly. Beach. Exactly. I mean, that's what, we noticed. Eh? that's what we noticed at Super Point as well. Mm. Mm. And when we saw, even after the warning siren was given, people were still out in sea. I mean, had they come back to the foreshore, I mean, to the bank, it would have, but we saw that blatant disregard of those warnings. Exactly. So actually, the essence of that mindset within those people needs to be changed as well about safety advisories. Mm. Well, if it was a lifeguard patrol beach, then yeah. it was okay. And, you know, there were no fatalities that day. Yeah. And I did talk to some people. I, I had a chat with Howard Politini, and he'd come with a huge group of his family. But they had a briefing before they went to the beach, and there were people supervising, you know, some of the adults. So, you know, there are ways to do it in a safe manner.
Yeah, I mean, gosh, yeah. if you go swimming, I mean, especially for the younger children, you just cannot afford to keep your eyes off your yes. children. Yes. I mean, it, how long does it take b before a person drowns? It doesn't take very long, does it? No, within a minute. There you I mean, go. It can, it can happen in a crowded pool when people, yes. people aren't watching. It's yeah. just right behind you. Yeah, and you just uh, have one poor little kid who's not being um, watched, just uh, like that. You know, there's an interesting um, fact about kids. When they reach a certain age, I think it's four or five, you notice eh, well, a, a three-year-old kid doesn't have an idea of its mortality. It will just jump to you without a concern of dropping, and you'll have to catch them. Yes. But you notice at a certain age, they suddenly realize, hey, I can get hurt. Yeah. And that's when you change the way you look after them. You know, the, the three-year-olds that have no idea that they can drown, they think they can fly, they think they're invisible. You <laughs> know? They have to be watched so much more carefully than the kids who have reached that age where they realize they're, they're mortal. Exactly. Mm. So um, that's something that we're looking at, right? Uh, lifeguards, and um, it's nice that you've uh, tried to book that piece of land. And uh, just um, life-saving skills, I think that needs to be taught too. Absolutely. If we, w our plan for Natandola is if it will be a community uh, volunteer-run organization, and that's where we support the police. And, um, and once, once we build a core of trained lifeguards, then those can volunteer. For instance, when there's a flood and there's search and rescue, we can offer assistance to the authorities. That would yes. be really good, mm. I tell you. But we need to take another short break. Sorry about that. But we'll be back for more on this interesting issue of water safety in the country on Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're back. Welcome once again on Gold FM, only the classic hits. It's Louise with you on the center show on Gold FM, only the classic hits. It's our talkback show. This is live on radio and uh, we have a delayed coverage on FBC TV. Now, uh, if uh, you have any idea that you'd like to pitch to the director of the Water Safety Council, you can call if you'd like. If you have a digital phone, 77 and our direct line, 3220907. So we shall continue with the subject of educating our children on water safety, Mr. Phil. I just had a thought, Louise. Imagine if education told every school kid of a certain age in Fiji, you can't pick up that rugby ball and play rugby this year until you can swim 200 yards, for instance, or you can't play soccer or netball. And then you can ramp that up and you can say, I want you to swim that distance um, a couple times in a row with a short break or holding something or carrying something. You can, you can very easily make quick change because this is a generational thing. Yeah. I think that gentleman that goes out at sea and doesn't check the weather forecast before he goes, um, it would take a generation, the, his son perhaps, to get it inculcated through whatever means we can think of before he takes it on board and becomes a part of them and part of Fiji. You know, that is so true because children, you know, yes. when you teach children, they keep it in their mind and they can even go and tell their parents that they're doing something wrong. So um, if you do this in a primary school level, I think this is uh, around the main time to get into their head uh, the issue of uh, water safety. Okay, and just to add on to that, uh, uh, swimming is, I believe swimming is an art that you cannot fo fo forget. Correct, like walking or riding yes. a bike. So if you learn swimming at whatever age it is, I don't think anybody can, at least for survival purposes, he will be able to survive if he's caught in a current or wherever. Yes. So, mm. if they're, they're taught this actually is introduced in schools, I don't think they will forget. Unlike physics, maths, they the calculation, the number crunching part, they can forget. But swimming, they won't be able to forget. Right. So, he, uh, he's right, a point blank, in saying that it should be included in the schools. Mm. Yes, it really should be because uh, they should have special lessons where they teach you life-saving skills and, and it, also teach you how to be a good swimmer. And it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make a difference whether you learn it at the age of three, I mean five or four or six, uh, six years, but he, he will never forget. Correct. 
Take for example, I'll share a story with you. Like uh, I was a pretty strong swimmer when I was young. So, I mean, we had a swimming pool. I loved the swimming pool. My grandmother used to call me water baby. And I had a neighbor which I actually taught to swim. And I was in class four. That's year four. And uh, one time, you know, she was getting too confident. She had, uh, you know, the rubber ring thing. And, uh, you know, she was going up and down. And I was swimming happily. And next thing I knew, she went, she slipped through. And uh, this is me, year four. Uh, luckily, I was a strong swimmer. I used to swim all the time, and I managed to save her life. <laughs> I still remember that day very clearly as daylight now. So, but that was the pool. I was lucky. So, I mean, I just swam and pushed her, you know, pushed her. First, she wanted to actually pull me under. That's what they normally do. They panic. Eh? So, I just pushed her, pushed her to, well, I slapped her first, and then pushed her to the side of the pool. And, uh, well, there you go. I mean, you can get really confident, too, sometimes when you can't even swim. And I told her off, and uh, like uh, you've said, it is about time that we do have swimming curriculum included in the school, mm. in my view. Um, I, I might change the topic a bit and talk about something positive. Eh? Okay. We've been, the Water Safety Council of Directors have been in uh, weekly meetings just very lately with the Ministry of Health. And in the first week of March this year, there's going to be a, a Water Safety Stakeholders Forum and uh, health has been uh, funded by WHO, so the international organizations are, um, are taking an interest and want to help. Now, the, and I, I might be speaking a bit out of school at early days here, but uh, I'm not a government employee, so I, I can apologize for saying this, but um, the Department of uh, Strategy and Policy and Planning has been asked to put together a policy, a Fiji government policy on drowning prevention, mm -hmm. which will lead into a national water safety plan, and that's massive news, it's very positive. Because prior to that, the Water Safety Council is an independent body of stakeholders, including government, but we don't have powers, you know, we're m largely a research and advocacy group. So if the, the government of Fiji makes it a policy and a national water safety plan, which they help to take ownership of, then I think things will move much faster than they have so far. I reckon so. So uh, maybe mm. just back to uh, Mr. Lal, you know how you mentioned uh, the 40 that had uh, were the drowning statistics last year, 2015. Yes. Out of them, there were 17 children yes. and, uh, well, men. Well, maybe we talk about uh, the men. How well, many were they out of that 40? Well, there were 13 men. Oh, okay. And when we look at it, uh, some, some of these men, actually four, or actually when we look at it, for, I mean, sh uh, reasons that was you wouldn't be able to imagine. For, for instance... Yeah. Maybe give us an example. Okay. 30, 35 men, I think. 35 yes. men, mm -hmm. yes. In 2014. No. That's uh, uh, in oh, sorry. We are looking at the male oh, okay. agenda. Okay, okay yes, the yes, gender yes. only. Right. So mm. 13. Yes. No, 35 there. It's male. Right, right. So we, the male, we are looking at the gender, I mean... Just to clarify his issue, mm -hmm. for 2015, we had males 33. Okay. And the females with seven. Right, right. right. I see. So yeah. that's the agenda that I'm looking mm. at. Okay, right. So and uh, just give us uh, the example of uh, how these men 20, got into such a 27 situation. were men. Right. And m by men, I'm meaning uh, over 17 years of age. Okay. So when you look at some of the reasons, uh, I mean, uh, last year, there was a flooding. I would say no, I'll go back to 2014. A man, 37 years of age, in, he was in Tawua. He was coming back after a grog party and he was trying to cross a flooded river. Okay. I mean, despite heavy rainfall, yes. he was having grog somewhere and then he was trying to swim across. Oh Imagine at, the, at zero, 100 hours, that's one o'clock <gasps> in the morning. Wow. Oh. <coughs> and when you look at it, they should be in a position to actually. And for these reasons, nobody would expect a man of that age to drown mm. for that reason. Full dope and then trying to cross a flooded river. So what does he think? He's Superman or something? Yes, definitely. Yeah, so I mean, that's how we perceive things. Yes? That mm. well, why, why did he do well, that? How did he get into that situation yes. in the first place? He didn't have the logic to think that uh, maybe not. He thought that. There'd be no problem at all. He'd be able to do it. And it was the height, yeah, the height of these floodings. That oh was dear. in 2014, I'm saying. So what do you say about that, uh, Mr. Phil? Well, I think um, it goes back to the culture. Eh? I noticed that not in all the beach, there's complete 100% unregulated 
drinking in public, eh? Mm-hmm. And they asked the police at the police post, and they're, and they're under-resourced as well, and they said, no, it's against the law, but, you know, we, we, there's so much we can do with vehicles and so forth. So, but it can come from us. We shouldn't always have to rely on government or the police to mm. tell us what to do and to give us guidance, you know? No, but yeah, I'm right. here, I'm talking about a guy who was... Well, he was drinking grog. drinking grog, yes. So, yes. you know, that sort of thing. In yeah. Australia, it's people kind of look at you in disgust if you talk about swimming and drinking alcohol in the same breath. Right. Anyway, we'll be back for more on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits, your only classic hits radio station in Fiji. A warm welcome to Speak Your Mind. This is live on radio. If uh, you'd like to call, 3220907. If you have a Digicel phone, 7732907. And uh, you might like to pitch in an idea to the director of the Water Safety Council, Mr. Philp, on uh, what uh, you may think about in just improving water safety. But uh, we'll go back to what we were talking about, how uh, men, uh, there are a lot of men who die because of drowning, as uh, you've just given one example of a guy who was full doped on grog and uh, decided to cross this river. It was flooded one o'clock in the morning. So that's one example. And uh, what others do you have? Well, I, I mean, it's all for the wrong reasons, we can say. Okay, uh, there were two others, two drownings whereby, I mean, they went for beach, beach Dima and then I don't know when they came, they, they couldn't come up. Either there was some, they had some faulty apparatus or which we couldn't actually, we don't have the expertise. To. They didn't have a body yes. to help them. Mm. So okay. when, we look, when we look at it, it's, it's, it's uh, these, these deaths of these mature people, I would say. Uh, it's all for the wrong reasons. It's, I think, maybe like what you were saying, that they want to act like you, uh, Superman. Superhero? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Well, they just think that it'll never happen to them, like a lot of people, that yes. sort of mentality. Yes. Instead of having, you know, a, uh, a second thought of uh, maybe not. Maybe not, yes. There's that, plus they haven't been equipped with the skills, eh? Yes. Which they might have learned if, when they were young, swimming was compulsory and there was a certain number of hours that they had to complete in a given week or a month or so forth. You're right, exactly. Mm. So uh, the, the, that's about the uh, men and uh, well the children is the worst one to me because yes. uh, it's not their fault. So I'd like to ask you Mr. Lal, uh, I mean you have a, a section in uh, your police act uh, where you can actually charge uh, parents for negligence or guardians? Y yes we have. In fact uh, in 2013, I presume there were two, two parents were taken to court in the same regards. And the case is still pending in court. It's still pending? Yes. Okay. And in these cases, uh, we, we do preliminary investigations and then we send it to the, our, direct, our CID branch, I mean the Criminal Investigation Department. Mm -hmm. And they actually provide the advices whether to charge them for negligence or no. And I'm sorry say, to say, even though I'm saying here, I've, I'm quoting here, there were about 13 deaths due to negligence. Right. But we haven't to date charged anybody in 2015 okay, for the so same negligence. Okay. Even though there's a proviso for that. I see. Because uh, when you think about it, I mean, it can't be very easy for you to charge Except parents as, I mean, they've already just they've lost a child. They've just lost somebody. Yes. And then there's a question, I mean, probably we are looking at the human factor of it as well. Yeah, well, that's understandable. But uh, maybe do something like awareness. Maybe they could join the Water Safety Council and, you know, speak about uh, these sorts of uh, incidences, you know, uh, through experience and uh, give them community work or something. But uh, for a jail term, maybe not. Mm. Yes, I mean, that's why we have actually, I mean, we are going hard, hard on, on our proactive and that is providing advices during these times. But, uh, Luis, I said to say that even if we provide advisories, people are just not listening. 
Okay, so uh, from the parents or guardians that uh, the police have charged, has anyone really had some real punishment for what they did? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, just like I mentioned before, it's still before the courts. Okay. So mm. we expect the courts to decide, and maybe what you are saying about yes, community work is not a bad idea. Is not a bad idea mm. at all. Mm -hmm. Yep, I but think so. Those are policy matters. That's for the courts to decide. Okay, so uh, Mr. Philp, uh, how can we increase access to swim lessons for all children? Well, it starts with the schools, which we've discussed. Mm -hmm. And uh, my personal uh, mission, because I come from a family of, of always being on the water, all kinds of water sports, is, is to, for government to focus on, different, on multiple levels on, uh, on creating a water culture and giving people the skills, giving them access to pools and to beaches, you know, designating actually taking an active interest in, in proposals like we have with Natandola for a community volunteer-based life-saving program. Take an interest and creating, you know, with it, it could happen very quickly where you say, we want three beaches, one at Pacific Harbor, one at Natandola and one in, in Suva with these minimum levels. We want some rescue boards or rescue tubes. Uh, the, if the police are there and we can't have volunteers during the week, can we get them CPR training? That won't take long. And we have the resources. We've been offered re uh, help from Royal Life Saving and Surf Life Saving Australia. Oh, right. For information, uh, still the police in all the training, it's inculcated in the training the, the art of life saving. Oh, okay. So it's just the rescuing part, the diving and all those things. We have got only 12 specialist drivers. Yeah. Uh, divers, sorry. The community has to step up. Yeah, to the take community responsibility. needs to step up mm. and... Maybe the idea of these public beaches, those which are frequented, when we look at it being uh, just like being patrolled beach Correct. beaches or something like that, cl being classified as patrolled beaches, is I, I think it's a fantastic idea. Oh, fantastic. And it was interesting that I was there on Boxing Day and New Year's Day taking notes because I realized very quickly that it can't just be putting up some flags and putting lifeguards there. It has to be a true partnership with, as you said, the, the resource owners in the area, if we take Nutton Dollar as an example, mm -hmm. and with the police. So uh, it would be a partnership where you'd work with a local police post up on the main road and yes. you'd say, look, can you regulate all this, this public drinking? That's against the laws of Fiji and it's not helping these people cope when they go in the water. They get cramps, they've just eaten, they're drinking. A recipe for disaster. Absolutely, my goodness me. So uh, I believe uh, the Water Safety Council of Fiji, I read it somewhere, working with the Shane Dorr, is that right? Could oh, you Shane, tell us more about uh, him? Um, we've tried uh, to use our international connections as much as we can, so we didn't have to just reinvent, you know, reinvent the wheel in Fiji and learn by mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's more than 200 countries in the world and they all have varying degrees of success with uh, drowning prevention some we can learn from, some who can learn from us. And this is why we, we try to get out of Fiji, out of our zone and engage around the world. Now, uh, Royal Life Saving Australia has been helpful to Fiji in the past and certainly Surf Life Saving Australia. We as police officers, we can keep on harping on our safety advisories. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's that's true. the least, the, I mean, it's that's reality. the least we can do. Eh? I mean, yes, and, uh, you're talking to adults here. Yes, given the limited resources. I uh, remember, Lucy, we have got, uh, as I mentioned, we've got only 12 divers. And we indulge in this after incidents. The mm. proactive part we give out, we give it out on radios, we give it out on TVs. Our uh, public relations officer does that. But it's these people who need to take care. Yes, there is only so much yes. uh, the police can do. I mean, do. anybody can take a child to a beach but the onus is on him to take care of the child absolutely when he's he or she is near the water thank you mr lal now we'll be back for more on gold fm only the classic hits speak your mind This is Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Uh, I'm Louise, keeping you company on today's episode. And uh, we've got a new guest in the studio. Well, he's no stranger. Patrick Bauer, warm welcome. Thank you, Louise. Right. Now, uh, I hear that uh, you are actually doing a lot of work uh, in uh, regards to water safety as well. You can just 
Give yourself a, a short intro. Uh, back in 2000, Louise, we were quite concerned about the drowning rate. Uh, we looked abroad and brought some expertise in from Australia, from the Australian Institute of Sports. And we worked in with Vodafone to sponsor a program that uh, we packed up the vehicle every Friday and we took to the road and went around Viti Levu, Vanu Levu, and Levuka. Covering all of the areas, we specifically looked at swimming pools, of course, which is the main venue that is often used for training. But we also looked at the beach and the river, and we worked with schools and took them to the beach and also took them to the river. And uh, the program continued. Um, we were hoping that we'd be able to, and I've heard others talk on the program today, about moving into schools. Yes, very important indeed. So that's great to see that uh, you are into this now. Yep. Yeah. We're still into it um, in the fact that we are implementing it at the school level. Right from the um, K level in the school, we run a um, swimming program, this, which is heavily weighted on life-saving. Right. And it is dovetail, mm -hmm. uh, dovetailed in with the strokes of swimming. So you're actually sw teaching swimming at the same time as ensuring that the children are covering their l life safety skills oh, when in and around water. So what school is this again, Patrick? Suva Christian Community School, but yes. we also did it at Veota Primary School. Well, that's really good. I mean, Colin, what do you mm. think? Mm. Well, um, there are schools that are doing it very, very well. So at um, least we know that Patrick Bauer is doing it. And uh, we have worked with schools that have now taken it on board, international school and other schools. Okay, so uh, we're looking at more of uh, public schools who need to even to get...